Hey guys, on today's show, a couple of you asked to see my collection of CW keys, and that's what I want to cover today. Just a short, quick video, just kind of going over the different keys that I've got and a little background on them. And uh, that'll be the show for today. So stay tuned. That's right here, right now on Ham Radio for non-techies. Welcome back to Ham Radio for non-techies, guys. We're trying to get you to study for and pass your exams and get you as a licensed ham radio operator as quickly as possible so you can enjoy this wonderful hobby as much as we do. So today, like I said, I want to discuss my straight key or my, my uh, CW key collection. Uh, for those of you not familiar, CW is like is Morse code. And it's a whole do different kind of language. It's a really fun way to communicate with people with very minimal equipment. You can make contacts on, on Morse code with as little as one watt or maybe even a half a watt. Uh, so, you know, it's a very, very uh, versatile way of communicating and using one of, the, one of the privileges you have in Morse code from the first day you get your technician exam uh, passed. So I want to go over the different keys that I've got here. I've got, I've got a small collection, and uh, I just want to go over real briefly. The first thing I want to discuss is I've got an oscillator. And this allows me, this is what I use to practice all of my, uh, my CW with when I'm in my class at the Long Island CW Club. And basically you just pop your key into the back of that, and I can hit the key now. So that allows me to change the tone and the volume and stuff like that. And I'm, when I'm in the classes, uh, I can put my microphone up to this. So if the, t the instructor is asking us to do a response to something he sent to us, he can he's able to hear me. And that way I'm also not broadcasting or transmitting on the air as I'm not good enough to be doing that just yet. But with that leads into my very first key. And this is my uh, PCB key. It's a simple straight key. I believe it's a 3D printed model. And I got this from CWMorse.us, and I got it as a combo kit. I just went to their website before shooting this video, and they no longer, or at least I couldn't find, where they offered a combo with this key and this oscillator. So now the oscillator is like 50 bucks, and I think the key was like 25 But it's a really cool, very straightforward little key. Nothing, nothing fancy about it. Super lightweight. It unplugs, fits in your pocket. But you can take it anywhere you need, and it's very, very responsive. To anything you want to do with it. Uh, really cool little key. It's the very first one I use, and I still use this on occasion when I'm in the classes. I'll use this one, or I'll use one of the other ones here, which we'll go over in a second. But that's the, that's the first key I've got, and it was kind of cool. So the next key I want to discuss, once I bought this one and bought this combo set and started getting into CW, it kind of lit off a monster with me, and I started buying all kinds of other uh, keys I went online looking for all kinds of stuff. And I found a couple, a couple of like uh, unobtainium type keys that I wanted. And uh, I'm still looking for those. And someday I'll, I'll eventually get them in my collection. But I figured, you know what? A lot of people have been talking about the World War II keys, the J38s and J37s. So I, I, went, on to, uh, I went on to different forums looking for these. And a lot of them were really beat up. I didn't, really, I didn't know a whole lot about them. I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time restoring them and stuff. But I did find a couple on eBay. So this one is my J38. It's fully restored. This is from World War II. It's an immaculate condition. I added this uh, bird's eye maple base to it just to give it more weight and give it a little, a little home to sit on. I have little uh, rubber feet on the bottom here to make sure it stays put when I'm using it. This is a very nice, this is probably one of my favorite keys in my entire collection. Uh, not only because it was the second one I bought and because it's from World War II, but because it's so very responsive. If I even if I plug this one into the oscillator here, I mean you really can't feel how how it how it how the uh, key is responsive, but it's very 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 cool little key. And I love it. I actually sniped this in a, in a, on an auction. I got it about $93, which is kind of a steal for something that was fully restored like this. And it was a little shinier when I got it. I think the oxidation on the brass is kind of uh, taken over over time. So I need to probably hit it with some Brasso or something to get it all cleaned up. But I really like this key. Well, that led me into looking into other ones. I, when I was in my CW club uh, in one of my classes, uh, the guy who runs the whole show, his name, his name is Howard, he was talking about a J37 key. 
and that is this little guy here. And this is basically a J38, it's basically the same, the same type of key, if you look at the difference on them here, but this one has a mount. So this one just clips on like so, and onto your leg, you clip it onto your leg right here, and when you plug it in, it's all worked on from your leg, so it stays, it stays attached. And hooking this one up, you can see this is also a very responsive uh, key. We'll go ahead and just for reasons here, we'll go ahead and get that done. So I can sit here with this one. So very cool, just a different style of a straight key. And I really, really enjoy this, uh, these, these, these two keys. I don't use this one as much. And what's really funny, this is also a World War II. This is brand new. This is a, a leftover surplus. Some guy apparently had access to these things that had been packaged for the last 80 years. And this thing is in immaculate condition. I got this for a little under $70, I believe. Uh, it came with a little bag and all kinds of stuff. I had, had, to, had to add my own wires and stuff to it. But this is a very, I mean, super clean, super clean key. And it's very, very nice to, to have in my collection. Very, very happy with that. The uh, next key, moving over, we're now getting out of straight keys and going into some uh, dangerous territory for me. I love the idea of paddles. I love the idea of the I I iambic paddles where you, you know, click back and forth with a single or doubles. Uh, the problem is it takes a little bit of skill to use these. And I'm not at the level yet where I can actually use one of these things yet. I can fudge it a little bit, but I'll, I'll, I'll miss letters or I'll send out the wrong letter or something like that. Something always happens, goes wrong with it. But this first one here is an MFJ 564. And the story behind this, I actually inherited this. A friend of mine's father was a uh, ham and he's now a silent key. And when he passed, I ended up getting all of his gear uh, his son came over and said, hey, I got my dad's a ham. I know you're a ham, blah, blah, blah. Would you like all this, all this ham radio stuff? I was like, sure, why not? So I inherited this and a couple of his HF, his old, old HF radios and some other, just a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of manuals and things. This was kind of cool to get a, get a cool little key. Now, when I got this, it was in a lot of, uh, it was in pieces. It wasn't working right. It wasn't, wasn't being responsive. And I've actually got it uh, tuned up now to where I can actually use it. And the way you use this, you have dits on one side and da's on the other. So we da 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 You just gotta, you have to get used to not having to manually uh, tap every single thing. It'll, it'll da 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 So it'll do its own little thing based on how it's set up. And like I said, for me, I have to control how fast my words per minute are on my radio. Otherwise, this thing starts taking off and going crazy. And I just can't, I can't keep control of the, uh, of the words and letters I'm trying to uh, transmit. So that's the MFJ. Very heavy, very cool uh, little thing. This thing weighs, probably, probably weighs three and a half pounds or something. It's, just, it's massive. This thing's all solid metal. And I did a little polishing on it. And I think I kind of screwed up a little bit when I was polishing it. But it was a whole lot worse condition before than it is now. And I'm really happy with that. So that brings us to my final one. I really want to get into the uh, doing stuff outdoors and the soda poda ideas uh, really brings in one of these types of keys. And this comes with accessories. You can get accessories to strap this to your leg and have it all kinds of stuff where you just probably just put a Velcro strap around it and you know pin it to your, to your knee or something like that. Uh, but this one is from, uh, this is an ultra porter paddle from American Morse equipment. This is probably the most expensive key on the entire table. Uh, this one came in at $170. And at the time when I bought it, I wanted it because I wanted something small like this. And they didn't, no longer had the uh, one, one of the other big unobtainium uh, paddles out there. It's called the Pico Paddle. And there's a guy that made these things years ago, made a limited run of them. He's no longer doing it or he passed away. And the Pico Paddle was really cool because it's about this size, but the little paddles would actually retract into the uh, housing so you can fit it right in your pocket and be ready to go. So I got the next closest or next best thing that I could find to date. Uh, and that's this one from uh, American Morse equipment. Very, very nice, very well made machined aluminum, I believe. Uh, very easy to hook up. You got to hook up and, uh, and, and uh, 
solder in your own wires and stuff, but it works exactly the same way as this paddle. You have one for dits and one for daws, and it's just nice and easy to carry out with you if you're doing, if you're doing some simple CW work. Uh, if you're on summits on the air, doing parks on the air, this is extremely portable. And like I said before, with Morse code, you could come out with just a simple, you can go get a simple little Morse code transceiver that runs on one watt or five watts or 10 watts. And you can talk to people around the world with a proper antenna and, and of course the proper propagation. Um, so I think these are a lot of fun. And this is man, like I said, this is my short little collection. And, uh, I'm going to keep collecting them. I don't, I'm still trying to learn. I got, you know, Morse code requires you to take, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes out of your day every day and stay proficient with what you learned. Otherwise, you'll eventually start losing it and forgetting it. And, um, you know, I, 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 I was going hardcore in August of 2021. And then around Christmas time, something happened. I guess life got in the way and I, I, I kind of veered off from it. I have not gone back into it. I do it every once in a while. I'll jump in occasionally and uh, jump in a class and kind of learn some stuff. Or I was go look up new things to learn, you know, refresh my memory on the, on the letters and things like that. But it is something you really need to ded dedicate yourself to just a little bit. But it's not, a, it's not hard, and it can be a lot of fun, and it opens up the rest of the license. When you studied for your license, whether it be technician, general, or extra, or, you know, whatever, whichever level you are, and you have privileges to use these on all those levels on many, many bands. So I think that you're actually kind of shortchanging yourself by not using it. And I get it. Some people have a hard time at memorization, this and that. It all takes practice. Even with my ability to memorize things really easily, it takes practice and time for me to even figure out different letters and things like that. And I get messed up. That's why there's little apps you can get. If you go to my website, hamradiofornontechies.com, I have a whole bunch of different apps you can get that'll teach you, or you can put on your phone for both iOS and for Android, that'll, that'll uh, turn it more like a game. And on your, on your free time, you can just if you're sitting around bored not doing anything, bring up the app and just start playing and learning Morse code. Uh, there's also all kinds of apps online or programs you can download. Uh, G4FON, um, Morse, Morse Code Ninja, I believe is another one. And uh, CW Player is another good one. These are all, these are all free um, apps as, or free programs, as far as I know, that will allow you to learn Morse code. So I encourage you to give it a shot and try it out. Because I really think if you if you tried it out, and you know maybe get a buddy to work with you. The best way to do it is have a buddy and have like a buddy system going where you guys can sit. You guys can sit on opposite ends of a table. Have your have your you know have your key plugged into an oscillator, and one of you send off something, and the other one tell you what that was. And just bounce off each other in a room and make it fun. You know, it's just something you can do to learn Morse code. And it's an invaluable uh, thing to have because in, in the event, I don't like going into the whole doom and gloom, but in the event of a grid down scenario, if you had the ability to do Morse code or understand and, and, and interpret Morse code, you'd be able to get information that you might not otherwise get any other way. Uh, so... Keep that in consideration. It's just a thought. But uh, this, is my, uh, this is my collection, guys. Anyway, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That really does help out the channel, and it helps YouTube know that people like my videos and wants to show it to more people that want to see stuff about ham radio. And, uh, you know, if you're new here, subscriptions are always free. Just down below there, just hit the subscribe button, click on a little bell, and you'll be notified when I do new videos. Until then, guys, I hope you have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this little adventure into crazy town with my CW, uh, my Morse code keys, and I hope you'll give it a shot. Until then, this is Ham Raider for Non-Techies, and we are clear.